Hi guys, welcome to a quick tutorial on how to use Zoom for students and participants. If you are a host or teacher, this is not the guide for you. This is just gonna show you how you can download everything, log in and use Zoom features as a student. So first things first, what is Zoom? Zoom is a popular video conferencing application used to host video chats, video conference calls, live classes, webinar, you get the point. Zoom can also be used on a laptop or desktop computer, such as a Mac or PC, a tablet or iPad, or an iPhone, or just a regular old smartphone. So the first thing I wanna show you is how you can get into a Zoom call on the fly without making an account. I don't necessarily recommend this, uh, but it is something that is possible if you are just jumping into a call really quickly. So if you're using a laptop or desktop computer, you are going to need the meeting URL or meeting ID to get into this call. Uh, you probably would have gotten this meeting ID through a invitation, uh, probably in your email. So you're gonna wanna click on that link. When you click on that link, it's gonna bring you to the second photo there, a page that will basically ask you to download the Zoom application onto your computer. Once you do that, it will open up this page here. And if the meeting hasn't started yet, you will be able to mess around with your audio. And if it has, it'll just go ahead and jump you right into class. Now, if you're trying to jump in from a mobile device, such as a tablet or smartphone, you're gonna need that same email. Uh, click on that URL, and it's going to bring you to a web page on your phone's or tablet's browser, and it's going to ask you to download the app. So if you have an Android, that is what the app looks like on the Play Store. And if you have an Apple device, that is what the Zoom Cloud Meetings app looks like on Apple. So go ahead and download that app. And then you're gonna to wanna to use the meeting ID indicated on that browser to go ahead and get into the class. So that is the crash course version of how to get into a Zoom call. But now I wanna get into how to Zoom like a prepared student like you are. Uh, pro tip, uh, when you're setting up a Zoom account, you might wanna do this on multiple devices to avoid pulling your hair out later because technology sometimes fails. So let's say your laptop dies, you're gonna to wanna to have all of this stuff ready to go on a backup device so that you're not cut off or freaking out that you can't get back into your class. All right, so this is how you would set up Zoom completely on a desktop or laptop. This is the most highly recommended way to get ready for a class. So let's go ahead and look at all of these steps here. Uh, the first step is you're gonna to wanna to visit zoom.us. So this time you were not following a URL link, you are actually gonna be downloading this directly from the Zoom website. So visit zoom.us and then you're gonna to wanna to click on sign up for free, yes. Zoom is free and it is much better if you sign up because you will already have an account. Once you go ahead and sign up, you can do this with your Google account or your Facebook account, or you can just do this with your work email, whatever is easiest for you. But once you sign up, I want you to go ahead and click on host or host a meeting with video. This will give you the opportunity to now download the Zoom application onto your computer so that you'll be ready to go for a future class and then once you do that, you get to actually play around with the application. And since you clicked on host with video, when your application launches, it's gonna go ahead and open it up with your webcam on, and it's gonna have a pop-up in the middle of the screen that says join with computer audio. So now this is your chance to go ahead and get familiar with Zoom before your very first class, which is highly recommended. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is actually click on test speakers and microphone. Go ahead and see if your microphone is working and if your speakers are working. Once you're set with that, go ahead and play with the other features that you see here indicated with arrows. You can turn off your video, you can mute yourself, you can play with the chat box and you can even record your screen. Then when you're done playing around on your new Zoom application, you can close the meeting and this is what it'll look like on your desktop. So you no longer actually need a browser anymore. All you'll actually need is the member ID of your calls. Now you will still need internet, uh, but what you can do from here on out is click that button that says join, type in the meeting ID number, which will be nine digits. And if that meeting has a password, you're gonna wanna type that in too. Okay, so since you are a super prepared student, we're gonna talk about setting up this backup plan. Uh, so for obvious reasons, the laptop is the most recommended version of doing this because it has a larger screen. 
Um, however, if you absolutely need to use a tablet or smartphone, this is how you would set it up. So the first thing you're going to want to do is visit the Apple um, or Android store, so the Play Store or the App Store, and download the app first. When you download it, it's gonna bring you to this screen, the third picture there, and it's gonna ask you to join a meeting, sign up or sign in. Now, if you went ahead and did the previous step, you can just sign in. But what I do recommend you doing, if you haven't signed up, just go ahead and click sign in anyways. That way, if you haven't signed up, you can register or sign in with a Google account or a Facebook account. And just like the computer application, you're going to want to familiarize yourself with the mobile app. So the first photo you see is the mobile app dashboard. As you can see, it's very simple and clean. First thing I want you to do is click new meeting so you can go ahead and open up the screen where you see yourself and you can familiarize yourself with all of the buttons, um, all of the settings that you can do. So again, you see that mute button, uh, the video, sharing your screen, participants. If you click on participants, if you open that up, you're gonna see the option for chat. So that's a little more hidden than in the desktop view. Very, very important when you're doing this, go ahead and flip your phone and landscape view. Most of us are used to talking on FaceTime with the phone in a profile view. However, that's not the best way to do things when you're in a class. So go ahead and turn that landscape view and get used to using the Zoom app in that sense. And lastly, what does inside a real Zoom call look like? It is a little bit different when you are hosting the video on your own and when you are a class participant. For instance, a few settings may be disabled because your teacher or host may have disabled them. You may also not have the ability to record the screen without the host's permission. So I wanna go ahead and show you a few features that may look a little bit different and things that may serve you a purpose. All right, so here you see I am a participant in a Zoom call. The first thing you need to do is mute your mic. Nobody wants background noise. Now your mic might already be muted by the teacher, but if that's not the case, go ahead and do that. And now what I want you to do is let's go ahead and test those speakers and the microphone. You will be the only one who can hear the noise as you're testing your speakers, and you'll be the only one to hear the microphone when you're testing it. That way you know that if you do have a question, your professor will in fact hear you. Next setting we're playing around with is the video. As you can see here, if you tap this button, you can turn off your video. So you will only see an avatar, but if you turn it back on, just click the button again. You can also toggle between several webcams if you have that option. So here I do have another webcam. You won't necessarily need another webcam for a class, but if you have one, that is an option. The next function that we're looking at here is the participants button. When you click on that button, you will see a list of everyone in the class, including the host or professor. If you have a question and everyone is muted, you're gonna to wanna to press this button right here that says raise your hand. That way the professor knows that you do have a question and they can go ahead and unmute you for a moment. The next function that we're looking at here is the chat function. Here, you are actually able to speak directly to everyone via a chat box. So if you have a question or a comment, you can type to everyone here if the professor has allowed that function. If you would like to ask a question or a comment directly to the professor, you can select just their name, type in your question, hit enter, and then that person who you've selected will be the only person who receives that message. This is useful if you don't feel like talking or if you'd like to ask a private question. Here we have the reactions button. This is great if you wanna convey some nonverbal communication. So if your teacher asks you a question, it's just yes or no, you can click the thumbs up, which is located right there. And if you like something that they said, give them a round of applause with this button right here. If you would like to see the information about your class, click the button in the upper left-hand corner and you will see the meeting ID, who the host is, the password, the URL, and your participant ID. If you're part of a class that involves some movement or needs you to step away from the laptop, a wired headset isn't going to work out. You could use the speakers from your computer, but they're not gonna be very loud. So look into getting a pair of Bluetooth headphones. That way you can just toggle to those instead of the other headphones you were using. Click on the settings here and select what you would like to use instead, and then go ahead and test the functions when you are switching them over. Again, when you are testing everything, you will be the only person who can hear the noise and you will be the only person who can hear the microphone. When everything is finished, you're gonna hit 
finish, and then you are gonna be able to step away from your computer and actively participate in the class while you can still hear everyone and everything clearly. The last feature that we're looking at here is how you can toggle your views. If you have a professor speaking, you're gonna to wanna to toggle that to just speaker view. That way their screen is the one that's highlighted and you can see them most clearly. If you would like to see everyone, however, go to click gallery view, and that way you will see several people who are part of the class. If you click the three buttons over someone's screen specifically, you can chat them or you can pin their video directly to your screen. To get out of that, click gallery view again. If you would like to mess with your own video settings, click the three buttons over your face and you'll see several settings here that you can mess with, such as rename, pin video, edit your profile photo, and hide yourself. Most people do not like to hide their own screen, so you can turn that off by clicking that button there. And very simple, when you're ready to leave the meeting, just click leave meeting and you have now successfully finished a class. And that's all folks, you know everything that you need to know to be a part of your next Zoom class. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're on Instagram and you like dogs, give us a follow at Smart Bitch Dog Training for some awesome dog training tips. Have a great rest of the day and thanks for watching.